All right, welcome to the Huddle Cam HD live show for March. Today, we are going to be demonstrating the Huddle Cam HD Simple Track 2 with the brand new EpiPan Pearl Nano. I'm very excited about this. We actually have George Herbert with us um, and an open Zoom session, which you can hear a little bit about. I'm using the auto tracking camera now actually to walk over to my table where I'm going to be interviewing George and learning about this awesome product. Let's bring George in and ask him a little bit about this Pearl Nano. How you doing, George? Good to see ah, you. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I'm waiting for that switch. Hey, Paul, how are you? <laughs> doing good. Um, I've been so excited. I've been playing with this Epifan Pearl Nano. Congratulations on the product release. Thank you for sending us one to test with. Everything's working great. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the basics and, and what this this product can do. Yeah, so uh, you know, I know some of your audience is familiar with the the Pearl product line already in terms of you know being standalone hardware encoders for all kinds of different things. Uh, Pearl Nano represents the entry level into that family of products now, um, and what we found was that a lot of people were looking for a device that was maybe a little more basic, a little smaller. Uh, and could be used in a, in a really flexible way. So we've tried to take a lot of the principles of the Pearl family of products, you know, that dedicated standalone hardware encoder that's still really simple to use, reliable, uh, but then still pack as much professional features as we can into the smallest footprint we can. Uh, and essentially that's, that's what Nano has delivered. So we have, you know, professional video inputs like SDI and also HDMI for, you know, kind of everyday use of whatever you have. But then we also have made sure that it has professional audio inputs like XLR uh, and of course embedded audio and things like that. And then also in sort of this class of the small encoders, we wanted to make sure it was even easier to use than some others on the market. And so we included that two inch touch screen with buttons and menus on there so that you can do confidence monitoring and some system control right on the front of the device. Uh, which really makes it stand out. Um, you know, it kind of really makes it a lot easier to use, set up out of the box, uh, and really get used to what's going on there. Um, so it's really exciting. Um, we've included flexible storage options for recording the SD card slot you see on the front there, but there's also a, a hatch on the bottom that you can install uh, an M.2 SATA drive. So if, you know, something a little more permanent is your style, you have that option for, for sort of that permanent M.2 SATA drive hatch on the bottom. Um, and I already know some customers are really excited about that. Uh, the unit I have at home has like a 500 gig drive in, installed in it. So it's like, that's a ton of recording on a device like this. Um, yeah, and again, it's, you know, just trying to make sure to have this small, small, inexpensive device that still has a lot of pro features in it to kind of, meet a good match with its bigger brothers in Pearl Mini and Pearl 2. Um, you know, it definitely doesn't offer everything those bigger ones do, uh, but we tried to put as much in there as we can. It's got a lot in there, and I actually put together a little wiring diagram to show a use case that I wanted to talk about today, um, which is education. And I know there's, there's yeah. other use cases that we could talk about, but from a lecture capture perspective in education, I feel like this is going to be a great product for a lot of people. This uh, case study here or wiring diagram shows an SDI camera, which I think is probably going to be pretty popular because those cameras can need a long cable run. For sure. Um, we have the, the Pearl Nano connected also to a presentation laptop. And I think in a lot of uh, schools and presentation areas, um, that laptop is usually very close to the Pearl, wouldn't you say? In many cases, yeah, for sure. And then uh, we currently are using the loop through output. I thought that was such a great option, but I also noticed it has two HDMI outs. So there's a loop through and just a regular HDMI output as well. So I guess I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. But just in this yeah. scenario, um, it's simple, right? Two video inputs, the ability to mix them together. And possibly, if you're interested, you can power this over PoE, which I thought was a great touch. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and so a lot of this was also about trying to make ease of integration there. So the, 
the option of either using the, the DC kind of power jack or PoE plus means that, you know, you could install it, maybe build it into a podium and not have to worry about running extra power to it if you can provide that over PoE plus. So that makes that integration a lot easier. You're absolutely right about the SDI camera thing, you know, then you can run a long distance from a you know, camera at the back of the class all the way up to maybe the front or wherever Pearl is located. Um, and then, uh, yeah, kind of get all those things in there. The HDMI outputs are an interesting thing. You know, the, the Pearl Mini and the Pearl 2, the bigger versions, have a, an HDMI output that's assignable. You could set your program channel or things like that. But what we found was that on small devices like this, where they might be installed in locations, there's not a lot of extra gear, that putting that direct HDMI pass-through, which is essentially, you know, low latency, zero latency loop through, means that you can put it in line with exactly as your wiring diagram shows from the presenter's laptop to the projector or other in-room display. And we don't need another DA or a splitter involved. We can just kind of have mini in the, or, or nano and that's, that's it. But we also have the other HDMI output that could be reflecting our program channel that maybe we're sending somewhere else, a breakout room next door or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, to another device, uh, depending on what you need, or maybe just a larger confidence monitor for for the the talent, <laughs> um, if you will. And so, again, just adding a lot of that flexibility in there to make sure that that the integration possibilities are, are wide ranging. I'm sort of thinking about unplugging it. I have it all set up, but I'd almost like to show it close up and be able to flip it around and everything. Um, so I'm thinking about unplugging this and and showing the, the inputs close up, just since we're talking about all of them now. Um, yeah, I, I should problem. have grabbed my other one so I could show it on camera. <laughs> well, that's okay. Here, let me flip it around here. We had a pretty good shot there of it. Um, so we were talking about, just so everyone can see here, just from left to right. So you can plug it in via regular power. Uh, yep. Because not everybody has PoE+. Plus. Um, then right. we've got the HDMI output. And this was the, I, wanted, I don't know if you answered this question. I apologize if you did. You've got an HDMI out, but then you've got the loop throughout. So the loop throughout right. is just giving you the output of your HDMI input? Exactly. Okay. And then the HDMI output, what does that show? How is that different? So it's assignable. Uh, so similar okay. to the other Pearl models, we can assign that to either show um, whatever our encoding channel is doing. So essentially our mm -hmm. program out, um, or we could assign it to even be a local console to get some more access uh, to settings. Um, or, or show, you know, maybe the SDI looped uh, through there with a little bit of latency. Um, so the big advantage and the differences between the two is, is mostly that, you know, one is assignable depending on what we need, but that HDMI pass through is just a straight loop through. So it's, it's a great piece, like I said, to put in line with maybe the in-room display so that we don't need any other external pieces to kind of do that. I love having you on here too because I had no idea about this uh, <laughs> M2 hard drive area. So your customers must be really excited about that. Yeah, again, flexibility, right? Some people really like the SD card uh, style, but some people want to have things more permanently installed, more like you know a hard drive. And so giving that option, you know, is is a is a great great possibility for a lot of our customers. You know, we have. I would say some education customers prefer the SD card, but we have some live event companies that really prefer, you know, they rent these units out, for example, and they want a permanent built-in drive. So the M.2 drive is a great option for them. So we've got a short video I wanted to play showing how uh, we believe a lot of our education customers are going to use the Pearl Nano with the Simple Track 2 auto tracking camera. So I'd like to play that video real quick, and then I uh, will take some Q&A from the audience. I have a couple more questions I want to ask you, but let's play that video quickly to give people an sure. idea of what this will look like in the field. In this video, we are going to set up an Epifan Pearl Nano with the Huddlecam HD Simple Track 2 to show how it can be used for lecture capture. The Epifan Pearl is the ideal lecture capture recording device it can be easily integrated into popular learning management systems such as Panopto and Kaltura. The Huddlecam HD Simple Track 2 is an auto tracking camera that can automatically follow a presenter from up to 55 feet away when installed in the classroom. By using the Pearl Nano with the Simple Track 2, 
you can schedule lecture recordings directly through Panopto or Kaltura, while also recording and streaming with a Pearl Nano whenever a lecture is about to begin. We will also use the Pearl Nano to create a dynamic layout using the camera's video feed and a computer's presentation. To get started, just plug in the Pearl Nano to power. For today's demo, we will be using an Ethernet port that allows us to provide the Pearl Nano with PoE Plus using our PoE Plus networking equipment. Next, we will plug in our video sources to the Epifan Pearl. Let's start with the HDMI port connected to the presentation laptop. Next, we can connect the SDI port to the SimpleTrack 2's video output connection. Because we also have an LCD monitor to show our presentation in the room, we can connect the HDMI loop-through port from the Epifan Pearl Nano into this display. This allows the Pearl Nano to capture the HDMI for recording and streaming, while also allowing us to display the video on a local monitor. From here, we can configure the Pearl using the IP address found on the Nano display. We can type this IP address into a web browser to start laying out our recordings. Let's start by checking our HDMI input. Yep, it's working, and it's set to 1920 by 1080. That's fine for this video recording setup. Let's label it Presentation PC and move on to our SDI input. Next, let's label our SDI input Simple Track 2. Check to make sure that it's set to 1080p as well. From here, let's configure a channel to show the auto tracking camera next to the HDMI presentation feed. You can click Channel to open up the layout area. Here, we can crop the video feed and optimize the layout, even adding a picture. You can now set up this channel with a variety of different layouts to make sure you're always capturing the most important content for your recorded lectures. Once connected to the Pearl Nano, the HuddleCam HD Simple Track 2 does not require a camera operator to follow presenters. Similarly, the Epifan Pearl Nano can be easily set up with learning management software to automatically schedule recordings. So you can use the learning management system you're already using and automate the entire lecture capture process. Together, we believe these solutions will create affordable and easily manageable lecture capture solutions for many organizations. This has been a quick video showing how easy it is to set up the Pearl Nano with the Simple Track 2. By combining the hands-off auto tracking capabilities of the Simple Track 2 with the powerful learning management integrations of the Pearl, we believe this is a lecture capture solution you will love. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe. So George, got a couple extra questions for you um, and a couple other things planned to tell you about. But does the Pearl support NDI? That was the question I wanted to ask you about. So the Pearl Nano currently does not. Um, it's something we're, we're looking at and, and maybe in the future that might be possible. But currently at launch, it does not. Um, you know, for a device like this, it's, it's kind of, it's pretty small, pretty lightweight. Um, and of course, you know, it, it's limited on the number of inputs it can support. So it's primarily focused around that HDMI and SDI input. Um, you know, right now at launch, uh, it also does not support a USB camera, but it will in the future. Um, currently it can support uh, USB audio. Um, so again, in a simplified setup, maybe you have a USB microphone you want to plug directly in. Um, so there's a few things we have planned uh, for the future uh, that, that are in development that will kind of enhance the capabilities of Nano going forward. Um, but I, you know, I think your video there, Paul, is 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 excellent, and in terms of showing kind of one of the, the main ideas, right, is that when we create content, especially within an education environment. We need it to be simple for the operators, um, especially these days when there's less hands on deck to help run these things. Um, so we need it to be really simple. 
I think the Simple Track 2 is an awesome camera. I've, I've played with it in our office when we were in the office. I haven't been in a long time, but um, I think that's an awesome pairing for something like Nano because, you know, the operator doesn't have to worry about positioning the camera. They just kind of show up and do their thing. And if they, if there's someone who likes to be active and move around, the Simple Track is going to take care of that for them. Running that into Pearl, it means they don't really have to do a whole lot there. If it's being scheduled through something like Panopto or Kaltura, then it's pretty much fully automated. If, even if it's not, there's dedicated start, stop, streaming and recording buttons right on the front of Pearl so that you can just you know push and go kind of thing. And they have that screen to see the confidence monitor to know what's there. On top of that though, content really only sucks people in if it's interesting and it's gauging and it looks good. And so the customized layout designer means that you know, we can make sure that maybe we've added some branding or just dressed it up a bit with images as backgrounds or overlays. But then we also have, you know, that computer presentation. And then, of course, what the camera's doing. I see so often, still today, a, a year after everyone kind of needing to figure all this stuff out, people trying to shoot a person and a projector screen from the same camera. And it just doesn't work. It looks bad. Um, it, you, cause you'll never get the camera to shoot both of those. Well, you got to choose one. Um, so whenever we can capture the native signal from our presentation computer and then pair that with the camera, it's going to look better. It's going to be more engaging and, and our audience is going to be, uh, better served. And that's again, kind of the idea with nano to keep that possible while being as simple to deliver as, as possible as well. Um, and yeah, you know, nice and small, like I say, you could tuck this thing into a, into a podium. There is actually, uh, Vesa screw mounts on the back of it. If you want to bolt it to a bracket or something, you could do that too. Um, kind of tuck it out of the way and, uh, and the POE, obviously we keep coming back to that, but that means you can put it pretty much anywhere. Um, so it, it, it's just, yeah, just a great little piece. Um, I have a lot of customers that are also really excited about using it as, kind of a, a remote contribution encoder. You know, maybe they pre-configure it and ship it to someone. It's small enough that it would be inexpensive to ship pretty much anywhere. And they just plug it in and, you know, kind of start a stream and, and bring that into their production um, over things like SRT or, or other means. So there's a ton of different ways we can see this. With education specifically, I think pairing it with something like the Simple Track is just, I think that's going to be incredible from an ease of use perspective. And speaking of ease of use, another thing I wanted to ask you about was the work you do with learning management systems. I know you work closely mm -hmm. with Panopto and Kaltura. And there's probably others. Um, what is it like from a scheduling perspective? You're a school, you use Kaltura, you use Panopto, maybe you use you know, another service. Um, does the Nano have those type of scheduling features? Is it remotely controllable through those learning management systems like the other Pearls? It is, yeah. So Pearl Nano has the same integration uh, with Kaltura and Panopto that the other Pearl models have, which means you can register it with Kaltura Panopto and it becomes a resource within that system. And you can then assign it to the schedule uh, that you're creating. Pearl downloads that schedule and essentially all of the start stop is automated and sending the recording or maybe the live stream asset back to the CMS uh, is all automated. So you know, you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, you know, there there are options through the web UI that you can create ad hoc events and stuff like that on the fly as well. But I think with Nano, that kind of deep, fully scheduled, fully automated workflow is what a lot of people are going to enjoy. So uh, our broad, our new broadcast engineer, Stephen Haywood, is here with us. And he's been asking me all about the Pearl products because he knows that you have an HTTP command set which is available mm -hmm. via your api and he's been talking about controlling the pearl nano with the super joy and there's actually a way this is going to sound crazy george but wrap your mind around this there's a way to have areas of the simple track too that you can actually have motion sensing abilities to send http commands interesting so you, you could have like the front of a podium or something where you wave your hand in front of it and the camera will actually send an HTTP command. Hmm. Um, now that area in front of a, of a podium might be error prone because someone could walk in front <laughs> of it. Maybe you'd want a different area. But I wanted to introduce Stephen. Uh, he's been asking me all about um, the Perl and the HTTP commands. 
Stephen, you've been using the Simple Track for a while now. Um, what are your thoughts on all of this? No, I think it's pretty awesome that you have that ability to be able to do that. I think the, you know, if you're familiar, George, you know, the TriCaster has that ability also to do HTTP mm -hmm. commands, so you can incorporate a whole lot. And as Paul said, in the Simple Track, setting up a hot zone or a hot spot, if you will, to where uh, an individual walks in front of that area, it will then trigger a command. Like I had it set up to pull down lower thirds, to switch to an outro, to go dark. Um, having that ability, like you said, paired with the simple track on this is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, our HTTP API is is pretty wide open. Uh, we have a document on our website with all the different code and key options in terms of what you can use. And, you know, a lot of people will just use a basic, you know, start, stop, record or start, stop, stream setup. Um, but of course, there's a lot more in there as well. Um, and that API is is essentially the same across all three Perl models. So someone who's trying to build these integrations, you know, maybe one room is the smaller scale room and, and they have a nano in there, but maybe they have a larger multi-camera setup in another room where they're using a Perl Mini or a Perl 2. You know, once you're familiar with the UIs and the code, it would be essentially the same across all of those pieces, uh, which is something that's important for us that that those commonalities are, are kind of shared across the Perl product line uh, and Nano is no exception. Well, and with the simple track, having the ability to either use it as a regular PPC camera or have it tracking right. you, as Paul alluded to earlier, the custom buttons in there, uh, I've, I've been you know, doing that for toggling audio on and off. And I think there's going to be different shortcuts that you can use even for your uh, product with it to, sure. to give it like a package deal, if you will, uh, for the education or government or whatever market. No, absolutely. And, and again, I think, um, you know, the beauty of the simple track is obviously the fact that it, it you know, you can pretty much just leave it to do it to do its thing once it's set up. Um, and I think Pearl Nano is kind of in that same thought process of once you've configured it the way you're typically going to use it, you know, you, you could be pretty hands off. You know, you can you can use the little screen built in to verify that things are, are working. Um, but you know, yeah, you could trigger the stream or trigger the record externally from a command from from Simple Track or or from uh, you know the new uh, Superjoy or whatever it might be. You know, some customers will integrate Pearls with Crestron controllers. Uh, Crestron has a driver module for that. But there's lots of ways to do that, and and whatever is going to suit the customer's needs, I think, is what we're we're all trying to deliver. Uh, ultimately, is to make it as easy to use. Because let's be honest, and this is very true in education, right, is if it's not easy to use, people aren't going to use it, right? right, that's right. Um, so making everything as easy to use as possible, um, you know, there's some wonderful professors out there, but they're not broadcast engineers, right? So right. If, if we can make it even easier for them to do their job and what they're good at by giving them technologies that's, that's easy to use or is as automated as it possibly can be, they're more likely to use it and and obviously deliver that content uh, to to the people who need to see it. And Paul, listening listening to the presentation and, and the interview here, um, there's four custom presets on the SuperJoy. I immediately thought of audio on, audio off, and then as as George alluded to, record and stream as a custom preset to make it easy for your education, your professors that are not broadcast uh, enabled. So maybe that's something we could put together in the future for a documentation or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think we can definitely look at that. <laughs> let's, we're going to hold you to that, George, because we need a little, I, need, I personally need a little help with those HTTP commands. Um, I looked at the documentation. It's not hard, but I need a little no. help. I'll be honest. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, we'll ask, figure it out. <laughs> let's, um, let's uh, get to some Q and a, um, sure. and I have one coming in right now from Raymond. And we also have a Zoom session open. So anyone in Zoom tests, uh, Tess usually kind of moderates the Q&A. So uh, I do want to ask Tess what's going on over there. And maybe she could help us with the Q&A. We do have plenty of questions over here for when you guys are ready. OK, great. great. Well, well let's, let's start with Raymond's test, uh, since I already popped it up on the screen there. And then I'll let you take over the Q&A. All right, Tess? Sure. Sounds good. Okay, so Raymond asks, uh, how about pairing the Simple Track 2 and the Pearl Nano with Zoom? Um, 
So Pearls don't directly integrate with conferencing apps like Zoom, but there are ways of kind of leveraging other tools to do that. Um, and that's one of the areas where using that HDMI loop through could actually help you because you could take that HDMI output and loop it into to maybe a capture card, shameless plug, Epifan makes those too, uh, but loop it into something that's running Zoom um, so that that camera feed is going into the Pearl as well as going into your Zoom. Um, and of course, I use Zoom interchangeably with whatever conferencing app is is your uh, is your choice. Um, you know, they're they're basically all the same. Just depends on which one you decide to pay for. Uh, but but that's a fairly common one that we do see. Um, and of course, you know, there's other options if if you're looking for you know, bringing different types of content in there. But those HDMI outputs can can definitely help with that. Well, and George, one thing I'll I'll mention as well because I I've worked with some customers now that I'm thinking about it. That use the Huddle Cam HD Simple Track, the USB output right. with Zoom and the SDI output to the Pearl. And the reason why is because they still will need the lecture captured in high definition with the Pearl to do you know, the mm-hmm. picture in picture and incorporate the HDMI presentation in the Panopto or Kaltura or having it recorded in the HD format. We all know Zoom doesn't necessarily bring the video in HD all the time. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, and that's a great point, Paul. Because you know, and and I forgot about that. I I did experiment with that on our Simple Track uh, quite some time ago. But there are many PTZ cameras out there that won't do those simultaneous outputs. Um, and when they do, then that's obviously a, a great path to uh, to share that. And, and Simple Track can can definitely help with that. Uh, so that's that's definitely another workflow you can use. Um, and you're right. You know, Zoom and most conferencing apps. You know. You're going to be lucky if you get 720, let alone 1080 out of them. They're often over compressed. The audio is usually not that great. And so that's where using a hardware encoder like Pearl is going to give you the power to have, you know, full HD up to 60 frames per second at pretty much any bit rate you want to choose for your recording in your live stream and professional audio coming in at high quality. Um, And even if you have another you know, back channel, maybe it's a hybrid classroom. You have another back channel on Zoom. Uh, Sharing that signal is definitely, definitely possible and uh, and can really help to, you know, I think hybrid events are going to be a pretty common thing for the foreseeable future. So finding ways to get that to work is great. Well, and I'll also mention that uh, we have had, you know, we love Zoom. We're using Zoom right now, but for- I do every day. (laughs) We use it every day, um, but for getting that 1080p footage, just for a comparison, Let's show George's video full screen. We're bringing him in with a software called Live to Air, which allows us to do 1080p. And then let's show Tess's video full screen. And Tess is coming through Zoom. And you can see, you know, Tess actually looks great. Don't worry, Tess. You look good. Um, You've got the Huddle Cam HD Pro, I know, which allows you to kind of zoom in and out, right? So it's a, why don't you show that? Throw me under the bus here. (laughs) <laughs> it's well i'm not saying there's anything wrong with your video i'm just saying it's and it really it's totally usable right i mean we're using it it works it's low latency it's incredible what zoom does i just wanted to mention that you know there's a big kind of a big difference and when you're in lecture mm-hmm. capture scenario when you know students are trying to read the letters on the board that extra resolution matters and that's what the the nano is able to directly deliver to kaltura to panopto and to learning management systems like that, even if you still need to accommodate Zoom. So there's a huge, huge difference between the compressed uh, 1080p video that (laughs) Zoom creates and the the hardware encoding with uncompressed video uh, on the Nano. Yeah, And, and typically with Zoom, the more people you add to a Zoom meeting, the more it compresses everything. So, you know, if you have a classroom of, of 25 participants all in Zoom, it the quality just keeps going lower and lower and lower. And then, you know, conferencing has huge advantages. The real-time two-way communication is obviously the best thing about it. But in terms of quality of video and audio, conferencing applications like Zoom cannot touch real live streaming. And these are different things. And I, and I spend a lot of time talking about that. Live streaming versus conferencing are two very different things. They're different workflows and they can deliver different uh, quality of content and and live streaming certainly gives you the power and the control to say, hey, I have bandwidth to stream it. I don't know, twenty megabit. Why not? I can do that in something like 
Perl. Uh, where Zoom, you know, you're lucky if you're going to get one megabit out of <laughs> out of the encoding. So uh, it it does make a big difference depending on the the content you're trying to deliver. Um, and also, again, test looks great there. But one of the things you might notice right away is you see all the Zoom UI elements, which are kind of ugly and they can be distracting. Um, so having a much cleaner image is much more engaging for the audience. Yeah, I agree. So Tess, let's let you. Go ahead and run the Q&A. Just ask questions to George, ask questions to me, whoever's appropriate. Um, but go ahead and let us know what we're seeing out there. Sure. We can start with the Mini and the Nano. Do they support SRT and RTMP? Yes. Uh, both, uh, all Perl models support uh, a variety of streaming protocols, including SRT, RTMP, RTMPS, HLS, MPEG Dash. Uh, all Perl models, including Nano, support all of those protocols as stream outputs. Great. Okay, we got another one coming in here from Michael. With the MSATA connection, how do you get data off of the device? I see USB 3, but at 5 G gigabytes, gigabits? I'm never good with that. That could take some time if you record 4G of video. Yeah, so with, again, with all Perl models, this is a, a pretty common feature we have. We can offload content. It's always recorded to the internal storage first. And in Nano's case, that could be the SD card or the M.2 drive. Um, and then we can offload it either automatically to a USB connected drive or even over the network to a network-based file server, like an FTP server, Windows Share, SFTP, Amazon S3. Um, and of course, if you're integrating with Panopto or Kaltura, it can go directly there. Um, so there's USB and network offload, but of course you can also just download them through Perl's uh, web browser-based UI as well, just like downloading anything through a browser. Do you offer a demo program for the Perl Nano and other devices in your line before they go out into the field? Uh, we can. Um, that's, a, that's a conversation that uh, we welcome and we can definitely have with our sales team. So if you're interested in that, uh, reach out to us. You can, you can email us, sales at epifan.com or info at epifan.com. And we're, we're happy to engage in those conversations with you. Um, some of our regional channel partners have demo units they have. We have our own pool of demo units as well. Uh, we can do online Zoom meetings uh, for, for talking about use cases and showing how we might do things. Uh, happy to have those conversations and see where what we can do to help. Here's uh, some feedback for you. Tom says, if Epifan sold a rack-mountable Perl that had two encoders like the Micro and NDI, I'd be buying a build as I need them for Panopto right now. Well, I have some good news. Um, the Perl 2, the, which is the biggest model in the Perl family, um, does come in rack mount versions. It's a, it's a 2U rack. Um, and it does support NDI. Um, it definitely has more than two encoders, though. It's capable of up to six simultaneous encoders at the same time. Um, so check out the Perl 2. Uh, check out our website. See if that might fit your needs. It is definitely the biggest, the top end of the, per, of the Perl family. Um, so it is the most expensive, of course. But um, it has NDI support, uh, as well as everything else we've been talking about today uh, and, and, and more. Uh, so it might be a great fit for what you need. Heading back to YouTube, we do have some more uh, questions coming for you from there. Is it possible mm -hmm. having UVC output for Zoom and WebEx? And can it, all right, we'll start with the Zoom and WebEx one with UVC output. Right, uh, I kind of touched on this earlier, but but unfortunately not, as it's a standalone encoder and not a capture card. Um, it doesn't have a UVC uh, interface in order to mount to, to a computer in that way. So the bridge around that would be to take the HDMI outputs from something on Perl and put that into another capture card that is UVC that's connected to, uh, to that computer. Um, again, in the case of Perl 2, where it supports NDI, Teams supports NDI, so you can kind of do a similar thing uh, with Teams and Perl 2 over the network with NDI connections, but that's kind of a bigger use case. Here's what, if I'm not really sure, is directed towards the cameras or, um, or the Perl. Ask about tally lights ah, okay. or an on-air light connecting to the system. So that, I mean, I suppose that's actually a question really for both, but I can answer it from a Perl perspective. Um, the pearls don't have a full 
broadcast style tally system, but we do have support for uh, on-air lights using uh, busy lights, uh, just USB busy lights. You could plug them in and it will you know, light up to indicate if recording and streaming is running. Um, so that's something we can run directly off of a Pearl. Um, but of course, there could be other systems involved. If you want multi-camera tally, then that probably plays a role more of the switcher than the encoder. Great, we have another one coming in from Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Can you switch between the Nano's inputs easily without using the buttons on the front of the Nano? So uh, here's one, and, and this is a question we get quite a bit. Uh, here's one of the big differentiations between Pearl Nano and the bigger models like Pearl Mini and Pearl 2. Pearl Nano does not have any built-in switching capability. Um, it has a single layout that you can design, whether that's a single input full screen or whether that's a composite of the two inputs that you design, but it only has a single one. So it doesn't have any switching built in. If we need switching as a key part of our workflow on a single device, that's where Pearl Mini or Pearl 2 come into play, where we can build multiple layouts, switch between them and do whatever we need to in that aspect. So Pearl Nano is a little more simplified uh, in that regard. So it, again, you could put a switcher in front of it and just take the program out of the switcher and put it into Nano and Nano will just do the heavy lifting for the encoding portion uh, while you run your program on a, on a separate switcher. Uh, and we have seen a lot of that as well. Well, thank you so much for getting to those questions, George. I think that covers it for uh, Q&A for now. Awesome. Great. Back to you, Paul. So, so last call for questions and we're gonna wrap this up this webinar up. George, thank you so much for being here. What a great product. Really excited to work with you a little bit more on the HTTP commands to see if we can make this even easier for everybody. Um, so I'm excited. You hit the nail on the head, P a POE encoder. I've never seen anything like it really. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're really excited for this. I mean, the interest in Nano has been honestly incredible. Um, the pre-sales numbers, even before we managed to start shipping them a couple weeks ago, was was staggering. Um, you know, some of the webinars I've hosted on, on our own channels have been some of the biggest ones we've ever done. So the demand for products like this is is huge right now. And I think the past year of experience where people have maybe finally figured out how to do live streaming very effectively, and now they're trying to, you know, carry that forward and find the right products to help them. Uh, I think Nano is a great fit for many of those customers, whether it's education, maybe corporate events where they're you know, probably going to be hybrid events for a while, uh, or whether it's you know, houses of worship and churches that that you know don't necessarily always have the biggest budgets, but want quality equipment. And again, easy to use since it's often run by, by volunteers. I think Nano fits that market extremely well. Uh, so there's a ton of possibilities here. Okay. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest ones I've been really excited about, and I've had some amazing conversations with customers about, is using small encoders like Pearl Nano as remote SRT contribution encoders, right? From site to site, point to point, to really increase the capabilities of remote production. So again, connect a simple track two to a Nano at a remote site, and the person just has to show up send an SRT stream to a, a central production hub, which could be a Pearl 2, um, and maybe even bring in multiple of those sites, mix them together, finish up your program, and then send it on to your final destination two? of your choosing. That's an extremely powerful workflow and, and something we're seeing a ton of interest in uh, because it's needed. Um, and it's what we've been doing at Epifan for all of our content creation for ooh, 11 months or so now, I guess. Um, and, and it's something that, you know, obviously we, we continue to learn more about and evolve and, and it's, it's really exciting times in, in streaming overall. Cool. Yeah. We had a final question about the MSRP, which we just showed up on the screen. Mm -hmm. It's 1299. Am I right by saying that? Uh, 1495 is the MSRP. Sorry. 1495. I think what we showed on the screen was right. I just. Yes. Yeah, it looked right when I saw it. <laughs> All right, George. Thank you so much for joining once again. It's always great to have you and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have you on again soon. Yeah, hopefully in the not too distant future, we can all be back in person together again.
I know. I'm looking forward to that as well. I, I really miss seeing everybody at all the trade shows. So I look forward to seeing yeah. you in person soon. For sure. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Thanks, George. Take care. Bye, everybody. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're watching. And we'll see you guys next month. And so it is, this is March. We'll see you in April. Bye.